Hi everybody, in this lesson we're going to look at the basics of debugging programs within Visual Studio. So to demonstrate this, I've just opened up um, a project that's in the C-Sharp Exercises uh, solution that you have on your local machine. So if you want to follow along, you can open that one up or you can just kind of watch and take notes as we go. So I'm going to look at, in particular, this Hello Methods program or Hello Methods project here. And this has two classes within it. It has a program.cs and it has a message.cs. So this, uh, if you recall from the reading, this particular project is just meant to demonstrate how to create your own methods, your own static methods, and to call those within your code. So we have program.cs, which has our main method here, and it calls in the first line message.getMessage, which is defined in message.cs right here. Okay, so uh, that, that's how this program is set up, and it's just, let's just go ahead and run it, and I can show you what it does. It's basically going to print Hello World in one of uh, three different languages. So I currently have it set up to print Hello World in French. Okay. So debuggers are one of the main useful tools to a programmer that are part of an IDE. And it's important to um, really rely on your debugger to help you figure out where problems are when you're coding. So we, we know that when we write code, especially a program that's all but the very simplest, the first time you write it, there's going to be problems with it. There are going to be problems that prevent our code from working the way we want it to. And there are different ways to go about solving those problems, and it depends on what your problem is. But one of the most useful is using a debugger, and uh, debuggers getting comfortable with them and using those as one of your go-to tools in coding is going to be essential for uh, both your sanity in terms of being able to efficiently figure out what's wrong with your code and just your happiness and effectiveness as a programmer. Okay, so um, Visual Studio has a great debugger, and I just want to kind of give you a brief little tour of how to use it. So the, the basic fundamental aspect of debuggers that uh, make them useful for programmers is that we can set what's called a breakpoint. And a breakpoint is simply something, a place in our code that we can mark for the debugger to stop at when it reaches that point in our code uh, while it's executing our code. So I'm going to go ahead and go to program.cs and I'm going to set a breakpoint at the first line, the first actual line that gets executed, which is line 12 here. And I can set a breakpoint by going to this left bar, see this left bar at the far left of my editor, and just clicking on that line in that left gray bar. And we can see that it put a little red dot here, it's highlighting that line. This is now a breakpoint. When I run my program in debug mode, the program will stop when it reaches this line. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice that I don't have to do anything different to run my program in debug mode. Uh, debug mode in Visual Studio, when I typically run a program in Visual Studio, it will run in de debug mode by default, which is a great feature. So uh, here we go. Our program is mid-execution. We see that it started and it stopped at this line right here. So right now, the current state of my program is that it is about to execute the line at which the arrow here on the left is pointing at. Okay, so we're now in the debug view of Visual Studio. So let me point out uh, a few things that are very useful. Okay, so these, in particular, these two panes at the bottom are the most useful. So you might see another pane here. Uh, I closed mine out. It's called, a, I believe it's called resources. It kind of shows you the memory and processor usage of your program. Um, I typically don't look at that, so uh, I just close it. And so if you want to close that and get it out of your way, feel free to do so. These two panes below are the most useful for you, though. So Let's look at the pane on the left. So this pane on the left lets us view values of uh, parameters, um, properties, variables within our code. All right, and so there's three little tabs that each show you different values of different variables or parameters. So the autos tab will always show you the value of uh, parameters and variables on the line that you're currently sitting at along with the previous line. So right now we can see that while we're sitting at line 12, we have yet to execute line 12, that the message variable, that local variable there is currently equal to null. We haven't actually run this method on the right to uh, initialize the value of message. Okay, we also see this particular args here that came from the parameter, the input parameter, which was the previous uh, line that was, that was executed within our code. Okay. So let's go to the Locals tab. 
This will show you the value of all local variables and parameters within your program. So um, as you go through, we'll see how this changes as we move through different uh, lines of code through the debugger. And then finally, this one's super useful, the watch tab. This one allows you to specify things that you want to pay attention to. So, um, you know, if you want to watch the value of a particular variable, you can enter it here. I only have one local variable, so that's the only one I can really enter. Um, if you wanted to watch an expression, for instance, if you wanted to um, keep, keep a certain tally on something, you could say uh, message And you could add something onto that. Okay, and this will show you the value of that expression. So you, you can put more than just variables or parameters in this uh, watch pane. Um, you can put anything you like basically that evaluates to a value. And these watch these guys in the watch pane, while your autos and locals will change as you go to different places in your program, these guys in the watch pane will, will stick there will stick right there for you. So they'll always be there for you to uh, keep track of. Okay, so that's that's the um, the way we can see the value of parameters and variables within our program. You can also look at the the um, call stack pane over here, and this uh, other it shows you some other um, items in it. Call stack and breakpoints are probably the most useful. If you have multiple breakpoints here, it will show you the locations of those breakpoints. This is especially useful when you're dealing with a very large program, and you're in the process of debugging it, and you might set several breakpoints to find an error. Uh, this will help you. Um, you know, easily see those breakpoints. You can disable them or enable them just by clicking that checkbox. So you don't have to delete the breakpoint in order to um, have the, uh, the debugger skip over it if you want to do it that way. And the call stack will just show you the the um, literally the call stack of the methods that have been called within your program. And so right now we're just in the top level main method and there's only one method in the call stack. We'll see that this call stack will have things added to it as we go to deeper levels of our program. Great, so that's kind of just the layout of the debugger and the things we can look at and inspect while we're working with the debugger. Um, obviously the most useful piece of the debugger, or one of the most useful features of the debugger is to control the flow of execution uh, of your code. So we're currently stopped mid-execution within our code and we can decide when we want to go to the next line and how we want to do that. So up in the toolbar here, there are three buttons that are extremely useful to you. And they're step into, step over, and step out. And so these three do slightly different things with regard to controlling the flow of the debugger. So right now, um, I have this, I'm at this line, message.getMessage. Um, suppose I want to see what actually happens inside that get message method. I'm not really sure. I suppose that I'm getting the wrong output from my program, and I want to see maybe maybe that get message isn't returning the right thing. Let's go see how what how it's doing what it's doing. Since I'm at this line of code, I can step into that method by selecting the step into button. And note that the debugger then jumps into this get message method. I can go to the next line of code within that given method by using step over. All right, and this will just kind of let me uh, look at the different uh, lines in an isolated way. No notice the call stack here. Now that I'm inside of the get message method, that shows up at the top of my call stack, and the main method, which I w which I was in previously, and from which I called get message, is down at the bottom of my call stack. And notice that our locals have changed relative to uh, where we are. The autos have changed. But watch is still the same. Watch will always, those, those things will always stick there regardless of where you're bouncing around in your code. Okay, so we can step over some of these. Suppose I'm in here and I realize, you know what, this is not really what I wanted to look at. This is not where my bug is. I'm gonna step out of this. I don't wanna go all the way through this method. I'm gonna step out. That's what the step out button does. So step out will bring us one level up in the call stack where we were previously. And then I can step over this to the next line. So one note about stepping into methods is that you can't step into um, you know, system-defined methods, methods that are part of the, the common language runtime of C-sharp. You can only step into methods that you defined within your program. So if I try to step into console.writeLine and see what's inside the guts of writeLine, I can't do that. I hit step, I had step in, uh, sorry, I hit step into, and it just kicks me down to the next line. So that's just one thing to note. You can't really step into 
um, into system defined methods, but that's okay. We should assume that those work the way they're supposed to. Okay, and just two more pieces that you can use when you're um, debugging. If you kind of realize you just want to let the program continue to run and just go, you can hit continue and it will just um, let it go and stop the step by step debugging and run the rest of your program, or at least until it hits another breakpoint if you have multiple breakpoints there. And you can always use, um, let me go ahead and run this again. If you, um, if you want to stop debugging, you can always use the stop button there to quit debugging as well. All right, so that's the main, those are some of the main basic features of the debugger within Visual Studio. One last thing I want to show you is how to set what's called a conditional breakpoint. So this can be especially useful when you're looking at, uh, say, you're, you're, you think your bug is contained in a loop and you want to stop your loop at a specific place when it's a certain iteration of the loop, but you don't want to stop and look at every single iteration of the loop. Or you're looking at a conditional and you don't want to stop at every single piece of that conditional, but you just want to stop at a certain point. So um, I'm going to go here and I'm going to set a breakpoint within my um, get message method. And if I right click on this breakpoint, I have the option to select conditions, okay? So this will allow me to conditionally stop on this breakpoint. It means that when the debugger is executing, it will stop at this breakpoint if the condition that I define is true. If that condition that I define is false, it will um, keep going. And I can sort of uh, modify that behavior by um, by modifying these drop downs. But the default usage and one of the most common usages is to stop when a condition is true. So say I want to stop when lang equals en. Okay, so there we go. Um, notice the state of the breakpoint has changed a little bit there. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Notice that my lang here, the parameter I'm passing in the get message is fr for French. So when I hit continue, um, my program should just go right over that breakpoint as it did. Okay, so let me go back here and let me change the value of this parameter to en, which is the condition that my conditional breakpoint is looking for. And let me go ahead and run it. Okay, so I stopped at my first breakpoint here. When I hit continue though this time, this conditional breakpoint will catch. This will catch because the condition that I set, which is that lang is equal to en, that condition is true. So I'm gonna stop at this conditional breakpoint. All right, so that's how we use conditional breakpoints to kind of have a more fine grained approach to our debugging. I hope this was useful and I hope that uh, you're able to use the debugger to, to sort of minimize your problems and quickly find your bugs within Visual Studio.